and welcome to the Jean SEO Hangouts on Air. Today we're discussing an interesting topic and um, a very uh, timely uh, topic because uh, we're hearing that there's going to be an algorithm update at Google called Penguin. So today we're discussing Penguin, how to prepare, how to deal with it, and uh, what it is. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of um, how the discussion will go, um, I'll give a, a brief outline of what the Penguin um, algorithm actually is, and then we'll go over any experiences that uh, the panelists in this Hangout uh, may have had with uh, this particular uh, search quality algorithm, and then we'll go into um, techniques, how to deal with uh, uh, Penguin, how to deal with uh, automated filters, and uh, how to keep your link profile um, nice and clean and safe. So. Uh, including, you know, how do you prioritize your activities, where do you start in a cleanup process, how do you find out if there's any bad things. So what I'll do is just basically cover the Penguin as a top level thing. So Google's al algorithm is a complex thing, um, layered with many, many things uh, that are dealing with relevance, uh, reputation of the site, uh, some, of, some of the segments of Google's algorithm which decides how to rank pages, um, deals with people who are cheating and uh, uh, looking at ways to um, trick search engines into ranking uh, higher. Some of those methods involve link manipulation. So, for example, people buying links, manipulating anchor text, uh, um, creating fake websites uh, with links, uh, massively uh, spammy link exchange programs, and so forth. So, uh, Penguin is a layer on top of uh, Google's overall search quality algorithm that looks for link schemes and manipulative link tactics and not only devalues those but also takes action against the website that uh, um, has employed such uh, tactics. So what I'd like to uh, do is uh, see if um, anyone in the Hangout panel has had any experiences with uh, Penguin, if anyone's website has actually been affected, or any one of their clients' websites has been affected. So who's brave enough to um, share their um, story or their experience? Well, we've got two people who want to want to say something. I'll, I'll start off with uh, Tony, who raised his hand. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess a bit of the background on why I believe I've been hit by Penguin is uh, Penguin was an algorithm that's been released on certain days. So if you if your website suddenly loses a lot of traffic on those days, that's how I've determined that it was Penguin that hit my website. Uh, hopefully the rest of you agree uh, on that. And the first Penguin was on the 24th of April last year. And I suddenly lost about three quarters of my traffic. So very related to Penguin. Uh, unfortunately, on the uh, on my story side, I've not recovered yet, so uh, I can't give you any uh, advice on uh, on uh, what is a successful recovery. Uh, I think maybe others can help. Uh, I sometimes hear people say you can gradually recover. Uh, others believe that you can only recover when Penguin gets re-released. Uh, I've just seen a flat line. Uh, even as I've carried on working on my website, the traffic hasn't increased anymore. It's just staying at a kind of fixed level. Uh, on the things that I've done, I actually released a, a uh, did a blog post on the acti activities I've done. I'll share that in the Hangout. So I'm quite open on trying to find out what I've done because I don't think I did anything <laughs> really bad. Uh, and I'm a small-scale website, so the sort of stuff, uh, there's no way I can afford to do anything bad at scale that could cause big stuff. Uh, I had some unfortunate backlinks that appear from others, uh, and that's another issue that I've noticed to try and resolve is uh, you can get backlinks from people that you have no control over and you don't even realize they're there. So I, had, I started doing cleanups on that. But again, uh, no recovery yet. So I've been waiting on this announcement that they'll actually do another update. And that's where I'm at at the moment. 
Uh, so, uh, Tony, uh, one yeah, that was one thing, one point that I forgot to uh, mention is that uh, Penguin doesn't run in parallel with uh, Google's normal search quality algorithm. It's something that they periodically push out, uh, more or less manual. Um, so are you hoping that uh, with the upcoming Penguin, which has been announced uh, recently, are you hoping that your issues will be cleared up? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a bit of a vague upcoming because I think he said sometime this year. Uh, <laughs> the last one was October, I think. And I've actually been deliberately staggering my uh, changes, starting with the most blatantly obvious what can be wrong. Like I had a, one website giving me 80,000 site-wide links and luckily they closed themselves down. So, <laughs> uh, so get, getting rid of those more blatant ones and then waiting uh, so that hopefully in the end I'll actually have a bit of an idea of what actually caused the problem in the first place. Uh, so I hope it's sooner or later than later. Uh, and if I don't recover, I'll have to get a bit more drastic on what I could be doing wrong. <laughs> Um, anyone else uh, who has actually been affected? Yeah. Nemec? Um Yeah, I've, I've been quite affected by uh, Penguin. I uh, ran quite a lot of uh, we could call test or mini websites, uh, niche websites, and um, completely knowing uh, what's the cause as uh, as I built unnatural links to them, simply simply speaking. Um, so, but the interesting thing that I saw on the 24th or 25th in Australia of April was um, that not all of my sites were affected, although they were using nearly identical methods of link building, nearly identical content, and, and so on. It was like a 70-30 split. So it was interesting to see kind of straight away uh, what caused Penguin and what, what what didn't cause penguin. So, um, as as it comes to recovery, um, or when it comes to these mini sites that linked uh, simply to the home page, I haven't seen any any recoveries really. Um, I have seen recoveries on sites that are larger and sites um, that create simply new pages. For example, if an old URL was hit by penguin and the content gets recreated on a uh, on a new new URL, this seems to be a way of recovery. However, um, those rankings seem still to be less stable. So I think it's still an effect of uh, being penalized in the past by Penguin. Okay, so t tell us a little bit about, so you're actually admitting you, you created websites uh, and you knew you were building in organic links. There's no, there's no fooling around there. No. Um, so you knew that, uh, was this pre-Penguin uh, pre time? Like before the first penguin kicked in? Oh yes, this was this was like uh, starting even a few years past, just building up uh, uh, on on my own domain names, um, different kinds of websites that were monetized in different ways. But um, so it was it, because it was many websites. It was a lot of experimentation, a lot of um, things that had to be done with scale because you can't you can't if if, if you you can't focus on on 50 or 80 websites if you want to do it that way. So it was mainly things like bought links where I could totally plan the, the anchor text, which uh, worked very well all up until uh, Penguin. And yeah, that was, that was a very um, interesting to see what, 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 what specifically caused Penguin. Yeah, so uh, what, what you're saying, what you're describing there is it looks like you uh, your link building style was uh, mass scale and it had a lot of footprint, a lot of uh, identifiable and information. Um, yeah. Anchor text yeah. is uh, one thing that people highlight as a, as a high risk area. Yep, yeah, that, that, that was something that I kind of um, noticed straight away was the websites which had anchor text that looked more organic, uh, naked URLs in the, as the anchor text. Those those were unharmed, although the links were coming from the same sources. But uh, those websites which had a more, um, although still diversified, but more commercial anchor text profile, those were 
hit severe, severely. Okay, so um, in your opinion, the, uh, the link building tactics that you used are now obsolete or you can still employ them between the penguins and try you to get some value? Employ them. You can still employ them and you can still get past the penguin because the penguin only, only deals with a specific usage, not with the type of link. So it's not that directory links or um, link network links or blog links are causing the problem. It's the overall char characteristics of, of, of the link profile, not the specific links, at least up to now. I don't know what will be coming with the new, new update of Penguin, but it seems that what Google did is a basically quite, um, it, it's a yes and no, yes and no filter, where um, if you're using links from bad sources, but you're using them in a way that looks natural, you can still pass through Penguin. So, um, from however many sites you had, how many have survived? Um, from about 50 sites, uh, about 15 survived Penguin. Okay, so it was a, a pretty big cut. Yeah. Um, when you reflect on uh, your experience, uh, was it worth it? Um, yeah, it was worth it. It depends. It depends what. What do you mean? Um, you know, there's always cost of opportunity, which you can't really um, count. So in that case, maybe it was not worth it. But on the other hand, uh, it worked. So you know, it's hard to, when something works. It's hard to kind of um, judge it. Obviously, um, with hindsight, you can we can say things like um, this was a too risky or or you know maybe doing something res less risky. But I, I see generally everything in, in in SEO has some level of risk. You know, we do guest posts, uh, we do infographics, and maybe the way we do them today is different than we did them two years ago. We might have been more brave to do uh, guest posts that were just for the link two years ago, and we w wouldn't do it today. So, you know, our risk assessment changes. And I, I would say if, if, if I went three years back, I would pr probably do the same thing. I would probably do the same thing. But um, uh, okay. pr prepare myself that, you know, 24th of April, I should have something else more so. If, um, if you were running a single website and uh, that's, that's all you had, would you employ the same link building tactics? Never. Never. Okay. Yeah, I thought that might be the answer. <laughs> so the, the risk and reward are out of balance in that case. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. I think we'll be asking you more questions um, soon. Um, is anyone else uh, in the panel uh, who's had uh, experience with uh, Penguin? I'm happy to share yeah. out. Uh, yep. Uh, hang on. Uh, I think Dave uh, spoke yep. first, so we'll let him um, share okay, his story. Thank you. <coughs> No, uh, I mean, my experience is uh, we've got lots of sites that we run. And uh, like I imagine everybody else here, so two years ago, we did use directories and blog networks. And, you know, your, your anchor text was always keyword rich. But we always did that supplementary to uh, good quality link building. And then when we went to PubCon in November 2011, the message from the experts coming out of there was you've got to stop that sort of behavior. You know, you just want to focus on brand URL, you know, just go for good quality demands, stop keyword stuff in your uh, title tags and what have you. So we took on board a lot of that advice, started applying it to our client sites. And then, so come April the 24th, I think we had one site that was affected by Penguin, and that was an exact match demand. So it was sort of to, you know, so we, we should have seen that one coming a lot, but the brand was also the exact match demand. So the link building that we'd built up over the years, everything contained the keywords, and that was a, that was the only site that we saw affected. So uh, I think for the most part, because we got good quality links, you know, we uh, we weren't too affected. But my my frustration is now uh, here in 2013, we've been following the good practices for like well over a year, and we're finding ourselves falling behind sites that are still carrying out the old practices and they're still working. So it would appear that Penguin. Has not even affected some niches yet. I'm just wondering if anyone else has found that by sticking to the good quality things, has anyone else found themselves falling away behind the competition who are still employing these methods? Yeah, 100% on that. 
Um, uh, one of my clients is in uh, financial, the financial markets, and um, we weren't affected uh, in the first place. But a lot of competition is using bad, bad practice, and is you know jumping leaps and bounds on a monthly basis, mm. um, which is just extremely frustrating. How about um, Luke? Sure. Uh, in, in terms of uh, competitors using dodgy tactics and still getting ahead? or Yeah, I mean, share some of your war stories. Are you seeing something that uh, upsets you? Uh, have you had any nasty experience yourselves? Yeah, so uh, our UK site, um, we've got a number of, of different sites, but our UK site got hit. Um, with the original uh, Penguin on April 24th. It uh, basically halved our traffic overnight. We were very reliant on, on search traffic. Um, the reason being that um, I guess maybe three or four years ago um, there were some dodgy link building practices going on. Um, and so we had thousands upon thousands of, of bad links just from you know link networks and unrelated sites and things like that. Um, I, I guess our first action was um, to to go through and try and remove some of those. Um, when the disavow tool came out, we thought, you know, hallelujah, here's our savior. Uh, unfortunately, yep. it hasn't it hasn't worked that way. Um, I guess what we did in in a, terms of a process, we used um, a bunch of sources to find the backlinks, like Webmaster Tools, but also going out and using Majestic, Ahrefs, um, Link Detox, all that sort of stuff building a, a list of our backlinks, um, then sorting them by <coughs> scores from Majestic and Ahrefs, things like that, to work out the worst ones, and then lining that up uh, with the anchor text. So if something had a really bad um, score from Majestic or Ahrefs, as well as spammy or repetitive uh, anchor text, that immediately went on our bad list. Um, and so for that site, we we came up with a list of about uh, 1,000 backlinks um, that we, to f at first we sort of tried to remove a few of them and then just put them all in, in the disavow and said, okay. Uh, apart from Penguin, we also got a, um, a manual penalty, I think, for, for our site. Um, so we received a warning from Google for that as well. Um, so we put the disavow in. We also requested reconsideration, which got knocked back. Um, no change from the disavow list. Um, after further advice, we, we actually made a real effort. We spent about two months manually trying to re reaching out to webmasters, trying to get the links removed. We got a good a good chunk removed, but only of that worst one thousand. And I think we had about fifty seven thousand links or something. So it wow. was only a proportion of you know the worst of the worst. Um, got another knockback. Um, I guess it just from speaking to other people, it looks like we just haven't gone far enough. Um, I don't know, Tim, Tim Capra, I'm excited to hear his story. He was able to share some stuff with us, but um, we've gone back now and fingers crossed it's going to work this time, but we've really gone and looked at the whole link profile and we're being a lot more ruthless um, with the ones that we're, we're going to cut out. So um, hopefully that's, that's going to work for us. But that, that was sort of the process we went through. Um, I just think it wasn't, uh, wasn't enough. Was it enough? That, that's what I'm hearing. Like, there, there was an article that I read, and it says less than nine percent of websites affected by Penguin have actually recovered. And that's an interesting um, statement because a lot of people don't realize once you remove and once you disavow all the links that you've had that used to help you, even if the penalty is no longer there, those links are also no longer there. So you're not ranking where you could be. Um, the, other, the other issue it's brought up is we've now looked at link profiles about other websites which haven't received a penalty yet, um, but we're looking at them going, hey, sure, they don't have the same amount of bad links, but there are still some there. So it's really forcing us to be proactive yep. about trying to get rid of those before anything happens to it and trying to clean up the link profiles for, for all of them. Yeah. I'm uh, keen to hear from uh, Richard. I mean, how does it, like, from, from somebody who's actually running the business, from your perspective, uh, business-wise, was it, was it, did it pay for itself up prior to it starting to make a loss because of the penalty? Was it worth it? 
uh, or was it one of those things that you would have never done if you knew the consequences? Yeah, it's a good question. I think we the sites that we got penalised on were were sites that weren't making much money. But looking at our competition in those regions that weren't Australia, we decided, well, in order to beat the competition, who were spamming the hell out of everything, we, we had to do the same thing. And so that was a business decision we made, and we thought, well, we can afford the risk if, if something bad happens. Um, we might, well, the, the UK website was, I work with Luke, by the way, who just spoke? Uh, the UK website was quite profitable, um, and now it's running at a significant loss. I think it's running at thirty-three percent of what it used to, and so our expenses were the same. So we had to really drop the expenses recently. Um, would we do it differently? Yes, definitely, because we didn't trust that Google would eventually penalise. The competition who were spammy, spamming the hell out of everything. We didn't trust Google that they would eventually remove them, and eventually they did. So I wish I could go back in time and do everything legitimately and properly and clean. And I should have just trusted that Google will eventually remove the competition um, because they all got penalised by Penguin as well. And the only ones left were the ones that weren't trying to do SEO, <laughs> which which kind of sucks. Um, but uh, yeah, just to back up what Luke was saying, we figure we have nothing else to lose, so we're now disavowed a majority of those fifty thousand links, and only kept the ones that we thought are of high value and you know we we don't know what else to do because we just keep getting denied. And we, we had to say goodbye to a lot of what we thought were really good links. Um, and if, if, if we get re-included re this time, we might start slowly adding some of the really good ones back in. Um, but we'll have to just decide that and how, and how, how we go. But I, as a business, yeah, it, it's hurt our business significantly. And Australia increased during the Penguin, so that made up for the loss overseas websites and the sister websites. So we're still about the same, but we didn't grow, and I would have liked to grow during the last year. So that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, now that's uh, that's a huge amount of links. I, I just wanted to confirm on one thing: this is not unique domains. Fifty thousand unique domains. This is separate links. Yes. Uh, Luke, do you remember how many unique domains that was? It was a couple of thousand unique domains. Yeah, I think it was about six or seven thousand uniques. Um, wow, so. that's still a huge amount. Um, yeah, amount of links to clean up. All right, so we've got a few uh, um, tips and questions that uh, has been going in the chat there. Um, Trey, did you want to point anything out since you first mentioned the twenty k of the penguinized websites? Yeah, I had a a, a long discussion. Several different times with different people. Penguin is about links, and of course, bad links. And in the past, you had tons of links, and those are all votes for your site. And let's say you had a hundred thousand links voting for your site, and that raised you up higher in the search engine result pages. Well, if twenty thousand of those links were considered bad by Penguin. They now count against you, so you no longer have 100,000 links. You have 80,000 links, plus you have 20,000 links counting against you, which you have to get rid of. Negative links. Whether you do it by, yeah, exactly, negative links. So instead of 80,000, you now have 60,000 links positive to you. And that's 40,000, you know, that's 40% that you just dropped in your rankings. Well, if you disavow them, get rid of them, um, have the webmasters, you know, remove them, whatever else, if they're all gone and you penguinized your site, you will not re recover the 100% because you now only have 80,000 links helping you out. So you've already dropped 20%. 
and it's a simple math thing, and some people don't understand that just because you've depenguinized everything, you think your site's going to recover. You're not going to recover unless you sit there and spend time building the good links to replace those that were bad links that got penguinized. Yeah, I think that's one problem we have in the industry. It's, uh, we call it building links, uh, whereas, in fact, we should be earning links. They should come. Um, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but that's like uh, guilty as charged. We have a page on our website called Link Building, right? But uh, it's it's there because people search for it, and then on that page, I have to re-explain sort of like, oh, yeah, it's, it's a bit different now. Um, and uh, quite honestly, it's, it's how it should have been uh, done. But don't get me started on this topic of one guy does something, and it works for them, and it continues to work for them, and then everyone copies them, and it works for them, and you're at the bottom doing the right thing by Google. Mm. You, you're starting to catch up to them, and you, you're sort of, it's a vicious cycle. But uh, um, some other time about that, uh, domino effect. Um, I know that uh, Dave, Dave Ashworth, had a uh, question regard, uh, regarding disavow, so go ahead. No, I was just, uh, <clears throat> no, personally, we've never had a client who's had a, a manual link warning penalty. We had a guy who came to us with that issue and we went to clear it up. But I think there's a lot of people that just think if you uh, go out and use a disavow tool, regardless of whether you had a warning or not, uh, that will be the answer to all your problems. Uh, now, we have used it on one occasion without warning and nothing's ever happened. So I'm just wondering what's people's understanding of uh, the actual disavow tool and when to use it. Do you use it if you get a penalty, or do you use it if you think you've got a penalty? Yeah, well, it sounds like uh, um, Tim has had some success stories there. Was that involving the disavow tool? Uh, yes. Um, I had um, two sites which were which were um, which had um, manual uh, uh, penalties, so link warnings. These two sites were pre, um, obviously, disavow tool. So that was just hard work removing links, um, which were successfully um, re-included. I the the penguin tool, uh, sorry, the disavow tool. I've had two experiences with that, um, and one was a site where I had already started cleaning up um, quite heavily. Um, got a knockback, disavow tool was launched sort of two weeks later and the last couple of hundred, and I mean literally a hundred, not thousands, the last couple of hundred, um, I disavowed and uh, resubmitted and that was fine. The second one is a bit of an, an, an uh, or the last one that I used disavow with, a slight bit of anomaly there because it was similar to to Luke's situation where um, you know we had done we had done um, manual removals then we um, disavowed a good section um, and was knocked back now the question was and then and then of course we we, we looked at more links and it was a thing like well <laughs> To me, these look good, but obviously there's something going on here. Um, and uh, we disavowed even more. We got knocked back. Um, and um, JM uh, mentioned in a hangout the one day that I should not look at just the actual URLs, but actually start disavowing entire domains. Um, once we did that, we eventually... Um, we were uh, eventually had the the penalty removed, but um, it was you know we literally had to remove pretty much every single domain, and I think this one was an, 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 an um, like I say an an, an anomaly, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean pretty much everything had to go. Uh, we just right, couldn't so release it on. So sorry, can you just clarify for those who are not up to speed with the disavow tool and everything else? How how is it that you actually uh, do the do the whole domain? Um, well, you would you you would instead of just obviously taking the the, the URL that you're on, so um, uh, dot com forward slash um, 
rice milk is a healthy drink, you know, where your link is, you would actually do it as the entire domain. You would just disavow the entire domain, um, not just where your link is or the page that your link is on. Okay. I think you forgot the domain colon syntax in front of it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you put if you put a specific URL, it's just going to do that URL. Um, so, and if you like, if you put just the home page of the domain, it'll disavow the links from the home page. But uh, to to make sure that everything's removed, you'll probably do domain colon and then the uh, root of the domain. Yeah. Um, yeah. The now, one thing. Uh, yeah. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that if you b before you're disavowing an entire domain, you should ask yourself: Is this a spammy domain entirely. Would you like? Are there any links on this domain that might that might be good? For example, if you if you disavow um, uh, Blogspot, <laughs> there might be some blogs on that uh, which are good, right? So I think I think uh, webmasters should use this with uh, great care and think about what you're doing before you start disavowing uh, major domains such as WordPress or Blogspot and so forth. An interesting thing just to mention, uh, which Luke reminded me of, is with this um, site that I had to pretty much remove everything, um, what I have done over the last couple of months is um, sort of each month I'll go in and actually remove one or two domains out of the disavow tool, which I believe that there is no way that these are actually uh, bad in any sense um, uh, you know they're just really good quality but I had to remove them out of this particular site to actually have the penalty removed so I don't know why uh, and we're still trying to figure out you know what the issue was but yes I've over time been going in and actually removing you know a couple at a time not loads just a couple at a time each month out of the disavow tool and funnily enough, we seem to be coming back um, very steadily when I when I start removing these uh, on, on a month by month basis. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's it's one of these things which <laughs> it, it, it's it's testing, and and we have to play that one by ear. Uh, all right. So uh, Daniel had a, a question, interesting one. So he wanted to know about what are you actually doing. Um, about good links, you know, you're removing bad links, but uh, what are you actually doing to uh, catch up to where you should be? Nobody's done any good links. Everyone was focused on taking them down first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's what you were saying, isn't it? I think a more interesting question would be how about you have to disavow a good link? And you know it's a good link, but Google says otherwise. How can you handle that? You just shut up and do it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> well, that, that just, I think that just proves that uh, Google is uh, is having trouble on on finding um, those those good and bad links. That's why um, I mean, if even if it's hard for Google to find these links, um, it, it's it's even harder for us. To, to disavow it or, or, or to keep them there. But uh, basically, if, if I would believe the link is good, um, and even you would think that could be creating the, the issue, I would still keep the link. But maybe uh, change the way the link is linking, let's say, if, if the link was uh, an exact anchor, uh, perhaps, um, perhaps uh, change a little bit the, the anchor text, Make it a little bit, a little bit more branded. And e if you really believe it's, 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 it's a good link, you shouldn't disavow it at all. I would do that. But again, I never suffered such, uh, such penalty. It's just, just what I think it could, it could be. All right. So um, lots of activities in, in the chat. Unfortunately, our audience uh, we've got 19 viewers, 20 viewers. Um, they're unable to follow that stream. So where should we? Uh, I think I think Luke had two questions, A and B. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah. Um, they're not really related to each other, but um, my first question was how long after using the disavow tool have people noticed that it starts working? Um, Tim said that uh, on his last use from disavow to release it was about two weeks. Um, and I've heard 
yeah, up to a month from from some people. So I don't know if that's the same for everybody else. Um, we're yet to see much of a result out of it. Does anyone else has anyone else used it successfully and, and noticed a specific time period? I have I done. Se- Sorry, go ahead. No, I haven't seen a, a release after a disavow. But uh, I actually have a question for Tim, if I can. Was that release on a Penguin rollout day? And did you receive a message that your penalty has been lifted, which happens with manual penalties, but not with Penguin? Yes. Yeah, no, these were manual, these were manual penalties that I'm talking about, uh, unnatural link penalties. No, um, not and penalties. I think, no. Um, and I think it was possibly coincidence, but on the last time that it was, uh, obviously, the last successful attempt uh, at adding the last uh, to the disavow tool, then um, obviously a, a resubmission. It was a two-week period, and I got the message that you know um, y- y- the site's fine. So you know, I, I think I don't know. For me, it was two weeks on on that occasion. I guess with with the disavow tool, there's no real. You have to keep checking it. Um, you know, there's no, you don't get a message saying, hey, yep, we've disavowed all those links for you, or these are the ones we've disavowed. You just have to kind of keep checking it, um, which is a little difficult. Um, yeah. In um, in 25 minutes or so, uh, there's going to be a hangout with uh, John Muir, and one of the questions the moderator is uh, asked by me, um, and that's uh, how do we know when your disavow file has been processed, links crawled, and uh, marked as completed. Yep. Basic links are ignored. Um, I'm pretty sure that that functionality doesn't exist, but it's a hint um, that that's a feature that we would very much like to see. Um, I have to say that I, considering I've had very little experience with Penguin, um, I've only done preventative uh, Penguin. So in our in our link profile, we've had uh, a variety of things. Uh, one was uh, reputation management stuff. So people were link building towards our pages to lift their brand to push some bad stuff out. Um, and that was my reward for mentioning them on my blog. Uh, very kind of them, spamming spamming those pages for me. So that was disavowed with a uh, with a line uh, specifying what it what it was. Um, I've had a brilliant idea about five years ago. Um, I'm going to create an online directory, and for somebody to get a do follow link, they got a link to me. Um, so it was a, a very stupid idea to an old domain that I don't use anymore, but the domain 301, so the links pass uh, across. Um, and it's only uh, maybe a month ago that I realized what I'd done, and uh, I completely forgot about that directory. And uh, we went panic, start removing those links, asking webmasters, of course, they. they just don't react, so chuck that into disavow file just to be safe. Um, and another thing that I'm embarrassed of is um, I found some um, uh, crappy articles that I've done uh, a long time ago in uh, one of those article distribution. I forgot what it was called, but basically they all had exact match anchor text and things. So I disavowed all that, um, deleted what I could, and Pleased to say that it had absolutely no impact on our rankings. It did nothing. So I think Google simply ignored that. But I wonder if we had some sort of a, if there was a threshold point where it goes, okay, now the percentage of the bad stuff that we found is too much, Penguin kicks in. I wonder if it's like that or if it's gradual impact. That was my other question, Dan, was is there a, a set threshold, um, you know, X percentage of bad links or what they qualify as bad links? And once you get over that, is it then much harder because every single one of your links are under scrutiny, whereas before they weren't looking at it because you didn't hit that threshold? Because, um, I, I mean, from the examples I've seen, it seems that's the case. Like, you might get to whatever, you know, 60 70% bad links, and then you can remove enough to get under that percentage, but they're still looking at all the rest of the links. Um, then, did you do that in advance, or did you get a uh, warning email about no, unnatural no, no. links? Um, uh, I did this in advance. Um, so I just uh, I just deleted all those links because I didn't 
I didn't want to take any chances. I knew they were being ignored, um, but I just didn't want to gamble. You know, I just uh, I like to uh, be able to sleep at night. Um, the only the only uh, warning that I got in my Google Webmasters tools was after I hijacked, hijacked uh, Rand Fishkin's uh, page, and the news got uh, got out, and uh, then uh, I think it was a manual uh, flag. So the not notification saying we've noticed so a low quality uh, quality issues on your site, specifically pages that are such and such, including copied content. So we then. Um, removed all those uh, mirrored pages and uh, like I think it was fine but I think the penalty was granular and manual well with manual mm. penalty it's very very easy to I mean well it's not quite very easy but it's it's uh, uh, its effects can be undone very very fast as if you take the manual action yourself and remove all those content and write um, how it is called a reconsideration request. Um, yeah, reconsideration request, <laughs> and you had the chance to get a fast answer. Yeah. you'll fix it in no yeah. time. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, but it's if, the algorithmic if it's a, penalty that we should be afraid of. Yeah, yeah, because if it's a peng, ping, penguin uh, penalty, then you have to wait a little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, Guys, I have a in, question. In, yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, for those of you who were actually penalized, did you did you see uh, at at page level, let's say, uh, some pages were, were were actually lost some rankings, or were when you noticed you were losing traffic, was it that impacting the whole site? I ask because um, I have seen a case where where one of the um, one good performing keyword with uh, with a lot of search volume. Um, was actually degraded like one or two positions after there was uh, some um, exact match, exact match um, anchor text. But then after being removed, then those those rankings um, went back again, and the whole site did not suffer from that. And so, w what was your case? Was it uh, yeah. at the whole site level or? Daniel, I can tell you um, at least from our uh, experience. Um, it seems to be a page by page thing, and Penguin is a, a per page penalty, not like Panda, which can affect the whole site. Um, but that's been the case for us. So we had one particular um, page on our site that we targeted with um, link building at some point in the past, um, which was our biggest page, and that got smashed with Penguin. But there are other pages on the site that still rank well for their particular keywords. So. Um, I don't know, maybe... But the one being penalized was, was the top keyword. Yeah, it? but I couldn't say that it hasn't affected the whole site, um, but there are certainly still pages that are ranking for their, their respective keywords. And still bringing good traffic, but still you you see, you saw loss, a yeah, huge loss. Of... The, the pages um, that, were, that had all the bad links were the ones that were getting the most traffic, um, which is why we targeted them in the first place. The case I was mentioning uh, personally, it's a site that uh, ranks top 10 for, for thousands of, of keywords. It's, um, it's like a niche group, niche keyword, very, very competitive keyword, and then plus a city, a uh, city name. And so um, the whole site was never affected, uh, but I saw some cases where there were some spammy links going to, to deep pages, which were ranking very well for, for that keyword, and then be, after removed, then was, was back again. So. Okay. Um, now we've got fifteen minutes of discussion left in the uh, recorded hangout. Uh, I'd like to uh, do a round and uh, each gives a tip um, about what is it a step. One of the steps in um, preventing and repairing and yep. or detection process. So. Let's start off uh, left to uh, left to right. Arthur, share a, share a tip with us. Something that you'd consider a good practice, either in prevention or or uh, strategic fixing. I would um, I would go first on reviewing all your uh, actual links, because um, I would first do some manual action in changing the um, um, those links. I mean the title tag on them should not be the same on all of them and you know uh, sometimes you get a lot a lot of links with the same 
title tags assigned and so on and so forth and those sometimes can trigger the the Google's spam action so I would reevaluate all my links on a regular basis okay sounds like a good tip um, over to uh, Daniel have you got any thoughts yes uh, I can share the the way I, I look at when when there is links and um, evaluating them so let's say when when we get a link or we know it's possible to to get a link from uh, the guest blog post or whatever it is um, what I usually do is uh, get get the domain and and see the um, the visibility score on search metrics. I don't know how many of you use search metrics, um, and try to correlate uh, the visibility score with with uh, Google updates. And so if I see there there was a steady increase uh, in visibility on those sites, but then they got crashed on those updates, and then they fix the thing and keeps coming up, coming up then I would consider um, keeping either the link or building a relationship with the website, community, etc. So links could, could come naturally. Um, and actually, what, one of the main reasons for me is to see if the, web, if the website cares about their content and about their community. And so if, if they're posting co content on a regular basis, uh, because I've, I've seen many cases where there is a post uh, from October and then the um, the post before or 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 the or the post next was like uh, three months um, three months later, and so I would not consider getting getting a, a link from this. If yes, I the, yeah, there is an interesting study done by uh, Google research team, um, their academic department. Um, they they were actually working on an algorithm that detects uh, uh, dead blogs. There are yeah. several categories of dead blogs. One is that never really took off. One is that took off and then died and then there's an active blog. Um, so they even factor in if a, if a website has say for example if a blog has a periodic uh, activity and then break and then activity and then break and if that's normal for it over a longer period of time they think okay that's an active blog still. So they have quite sophisticated methods of detecting that. I, I even have an article that summarizes their findings. So that's that's a very uh, uh, a very uh, valid point. I like I like that thought. Um, over to uh, Dave. Um, a tip, uh, preventative or remedial? Uh, I guess remedial would be well. I think there's two aspects to it. There's offsite and on your own site. So offsite, I would say, moving forward, if you haven't had a link warning, then but you know you've got profile that suggests you might get hit at some point in the future, is just to play the long game and just try and dilute your uh, profile with brand and domain links from you know better quality sites you know actually go out and try to get the good quality stuff but only aim um, for brand and domain only and try and get the uh, percentage of your bat links up so that you've got mainly brand and domain but the, the one that we've done for sites that have been hit on their own site is to start producing a, a long tail blog content to attract links and attract traffic on the longer tail and uh, also look out for over optimization on your own site with your internal links and what have you because uh, a lot of people seem to concentrate on Penguin from a links point of view but I also think there's an element of on site as well on your own site to make sure you're not over optimizing that as well okay um, I personally don't think there's anything to do with on site but we don't know <laughs> And Google probably won't tell us. So talking things like site-wide links with keywords, and you know, I think you will get hit for that eventually. Okay, I think but I think, think at least correlates. Then I think at least correlates when when there's a lot of internal links, exact match, and then you have the same for mm. for externally. Then I think they do they do correlate. Yeah, I think one thing uh, to keep in mind is that uh, Google does use on-site factors to determine what a crap site is, in order to catch those links. So mm. the, the pages that are linking to you are obviously observed. Um, all signals, not just link signals. Um, so I'm 100% I'm that there's, there's an on-site factor there. H how exactly it fits, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, so I guess uh, my turn. As we go left to right, it's, it's getting harder and harder to find uh, uh, tips. So by the time we get to Trey, <laughs> he's going to have to have some really hardcore tip for us. Um, so the the one the one that um, I, I would highlight uh, 
would be to, as a preventative measure, because I'm only qualified to, to speak there because I have no experience um, in the other side. Um, I would download all my links in Google Webmasters Tools, uh, but I would not go one by one and scan those links uh, manually, especially if it's a large link profile. Instead, I would plug those into a, a form of a script or run via API, get the Majestic or uh, um, use one of the tools uh, that are made for um, bad type of links. So analyze the entire link profile, scan it for quality, and uh, highlight any high offenders. A good tool for doing that is um, SEO Moz's Open Site Explorer where you can just go and have a look at your link profile um, anchor text distribution. So if you have a lot of exact match anchor text that's commercial um, and if that type of link matches what you found in Google Webmasters tools, that's obviously the stuff that you've got to prioritize. So I guess my tip is around prioritizing your activities. Um, and <laughs> Richard says, uh, damn it, then stole mine. <laughs> so, sorry, Richard. Um, uh, is there a question there? Um, Dan, can we have a look on what do we think next update will be focused on? Yeah, I mean, I mean, sure. We'll 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 let Richard uh, talk about that unless he's got another tip for us. Um, over to Luke. Um, I've got a, a heap of tips for as far as going through if you've been hit, but I think my tip will be. Um, don't just assume that once you get rid of the bad links that you're going to rank again because you won't. Um, you need to replace those links with something. So focus, don't, don't just play the short game, play the longer game and focus on building some good quality content and building relationships with other people um, to really build up good links. So if it takes you 10 times longer to get a good link than 10 crappy ones, do it because it's, it's well worth it in the long run. Uh, let's hear. Let's hear from Nemec, uh, the uh, experienced uh, link schema. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see what his advice might be around this. I'm keen to hear. I I I kind of same kind of the similar thing to Luke is uh, it preventative. I wouldn't focus too much on removing links unless you know that of something obviously wrong with your link profile. But otherwise. Just, just building good signals, natural signals, and it doesn't have to be links. It can be, I believe, uh, social signals or traffic signals. It all kind of shows that you're a real, legitimate website that people like. If you can do that, uh, you will survive because there is a lot of bad websites out there. So that's kind of what I would focus on. And if you have been hit by Penguin and you don't know what to do and you've removed your links, um, try building... Um, new pages on your site. So uh, instead of, uh, not, don't just copy your content to a new URL on the same site. Just rebuild it, rewrite it, and since it's a page-based penalty as we've talked about, it's, it's a way of kind of getting out of the penalty. What would you do with the old page? Would you 404 it or 301 it? Oh, you can, there's this, I like to leave them. Because it just, um, if you're 404 it, there's a chance that Google's going to try and match another URL to it. If you're 301 it, you're kind of telling Google, look, this is the new page, the new version of the old spam page. So I just leave it and maybe make it an orphan page, drop it from the link structure. Oh, we're tickling a very interesting area here, but I can't dive into it right now. Um, the, the whole business with uh, one page disappears, will Google transfer the quality signals, penalties, link equity to another equivalent? Speculative material, but maybe some other time. I love it. Um, that would be interesting. Yes, definitely. Um, good good well, experiment material. Hasn't there been some um, reports where people have actually just taken content, their old content, where they had penalties on, chucks it onto a new domain. Google's remembered their content, even though it's a clearly brand new domain. Uh, they remembered their content. There's no link between the sites whatsoever. And all of a sudden, in their webmaster tools, hey, presto, link warning. Yeah. Um, I I haven't had a case like that myself, so I can't really say. But uh, if I ran a search engine, I'd do the same thing. Um, yeah. I think that's uh, that's common. Google. Sense. That's the yeah. uh, 
Let's see. Never Richard... forget. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if Richard's I... thought of his tip. Maybe unmute yourself first. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, to anyone that's listening and they have a website that is of any value to you that hasn't or has been hit by Penguin, I just want to emphasize how easy it is for Google to spot links that aren't natural by simply looking at the keyword text. And if you've got a hundred links and ten of them are an exact match keyword for what you want to rank for. It, it, it's unnatural. I mean, if you have a look at a natural article or a natural way to link, it includes punctuation, includes commas, full stops, includes half sentences, includes click here, includes more, the actual URL itself, the domain name. Have a look at, um, use a spreadsheet. Do what Dan said, get from Majestic or Ahrefs, paste in the URL and the keyword into a massive spreadsheet, and then what I'll do, I'll share on the Google Plus page the actual spreadsheet that I use, and it, it, there's a macro in there that will create a third column that will count the number of times a keyword has been used, and if you've got more than a few hundred links, it's really helpful, and if it's used more than... Um, say 5% of the time, it'll highlight that cell red, so you can easily see which links Google might be able to easily see as being artificial because you've obviously gone out to source that link because it's too much of a coincidence if it's an exact match keyword link. And that's my tip, and I'll share that on the Google Plus page from this Hangout. Wow, that's that's brilliant. Thanks a lot, um, Richard. That's uh, That sounds awesome. Can't wait to play with that tool. Um, all right, over to Tim. What tip would you like to point out? Uh, yeah, I think everyone's nicked him. Um, for me, um, just look at your, you know, I never uh, in, in the past or pre-Penguin actually spent a lot of time looking at my um, link profile on a monthly basis. Um, actually look at them now because these things can hurt you even if you're not engaged in active link building um, in the sense that you are going out to try to build build links if you're just a mom and pop website keep an eye on your link profile because there are things out there which naturally occur which can harm you great tip um, Tony how come I'm always on the right? <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> uh, I've actually got a few. Uh, slightly different angle, I think. Uh, first thing is I think people need to confirm what the beast is that they're fighting. Um, check uh, whether it's a specific date, whether it is Penguin, whether it's Panda, or whether it's a manual penalty. So do a reconsideration request. So you're not just chasing dragons. Uh, I, I recently had a, a guy come to me and asked me to fix his problem and he said he'd been to two SEOs, they'd done work on it, uh, they couldn't fix it. His problem was he'd never ranked. It was nothing to do with penalties or anything. He, he just had a crap website. <laughs> uh, so I got myself out of a job there. Uh, the other one is uh, from, from my experiences, I'd love to have a lot more information available about what happened before and what happened after. Uh, so what I'd suggest is uh, maybe this should get your upcoming tool to download Google Webmaster Tools data. And so that, uh, like, I would love to know what Google was ranking me for before I got Penguin and all that details, but it's gone. You can't go back and get it. Uh, Another trick is uh, in Google Analytics, you can have it integrate uh, position data f from uh, you get the uh, uh, the URL and uh, get that into analytics. Again, I would love to know how my positions changed before and after for all the keywords. Uh, so get data. Make sure you're tracking data now because once it happens, you can't go a lot of it. You can't go back and get. Uh, Last one is be honest to yourself. I found myself quite a few times looking at stuff going, ah, oh, that can't be bad. That's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to keep going, no. Uh, 
basically I took my list and I went, these are all different levels of bad. Go go for the worst ones first and slowly go through them. Fantastic. And, uh, hopefully that gets it there and on to you, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, before we uh, um, go over to uh, Trey's tip, I just want to point out that when you download Google Webmasters Tools data, make sure you spot any nofollower links because that's not the first priority you have to go chasing. Nofollow links is only dangerous if it happens to turn do follow by some freak accident. Any links that are not follow, that's the stuff that you leave for last. So go after the links that are actually are passing page rank first. So that's just to clarify that because otherwise you'd be wasting time in a wrong area. All right. And I was talking about uh, uh, downloading the, uh, the search results data uh, so that you know uh, position changes and things. You, you got three months to get it, and after yeah. that, you, you've, you've, you've lost it, unless they use your tool. Yep. Go to, go to Google Webmasters Tools and every month download, download that data because you want to keep that. All right, Trey. Well, most of the, the stuff I wanted to talk about has already been talked about. So I guess my biggest thing is, is one of the my most worry, worrisome thing is, is, is the link disavow tool could be a very good tool to use, but I have to stress big time if Oh, what a cliffhanger. All right, hang on. Hang, we had an interruption in the, um, in the connection then, Trey. We're not able to hear you whatsoever. I think you... Yeah. Uh, uh, what was he gonna say? Let's speculate on this. Was he gonna say use it use it with caution, with great care? Sorry, I started my software again. The internet will be back soon. No, we lost. We lost Ray. What do we do now? I think there was one thing that uh, you guys wanted to talk about before we close off, and that was what's the next update about? What what is the next wave of penguin going to go and look uh, uh, look for? Um, algorithmic. Algorithmic, yep. Are they built I'm, I'm, into the updates? Oh, built in. Mm. Wow. So it's a rolling one. Rolling yeah. one, like panda. Mm. Okay. Maybe. Um, I think. Going. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Very good. Uh, I believe it's going to be similar to this one. They're just going to incorporate new signals because it seems that they did catch a very broad category, very broad category of manipulative link building, and that's uh, manipulating anchor text. But there's so many other signals they could look. They could look at, you know, the uh, back backlink pages that don't have any traffic, any social signals. All, all, all sorts of new signals that they aren't incorporating in Penguin, or they don't seem to be incorporating, they could probably still figure figure out and include in the new ROI. To, to what extent does everybody think that they're using the information from the disavow tool? Um, are they using that to, you know, see which sites should be Penguinified? For, uh, I yeah, imagine they use it for the uh, Panda updates myself, but. Yeah. I think I think they already know where these sites are, regardless of what we add to disavow. I think they know who they are, where they are already. They might discover some new networks, um, but I think a majority they know where they are already. Uh, yeah, I'm of the opinion that uh, the latest uh, penguin is going to hit a few big networks. Um, that's been hinted um, already by uh, Matt Cutts. But I yeah. think it's also going to be a little bit smarter. And I think it'd be crazy not to use the disavow information, to, at least to sort of sharpen up their uh, algorithmic senses. And I do think, I know we spoke about it before, and you, you didn't think there's a coloration, but I do believe that at some point in the future there will be a penguin update that targets over-optimization on your own site, like uh, keyword stuff in title tags, site-wide links, URLs. I do think there will be an update soon that targets them things. Yeah, I mean, regardless of what we call it, whether it's a penguin or panda or orca or you know zebra, um, I think uh, I think we have to remember that that's just names SEO community has labelled on uh, various uh, 
um, algorithms, and it's they're just search quality filters, really. Search yep. quality filters and algorithms, and that's on top of those two major ones, uh, we're seeing uh, you know dozens of other uh, search quality filters uh, that have been in action uh, even before Panda and Penguin. And uh, you're never safe really from one algorithm, and you know because there's so many of them uh, at play now. Um, but I think the advice so far given is uh, uh, pretty solid. I'm just hanging to hear this one last thing that uh, Trey was uh, interrupted by his technology. He couldn't quite finish his sentence. Um, he was saying, just be, be careful with the disavow tool because 42. I was basically saying about the disavow tool that that should definitely be the last resort whatsoever. Really be sure that you want this link to go away before you use the disavow tool. I've watched several people disavow sites when they should have just disavowed one link. I've seen people just use the disavow tool because they were just scared and they've watched their rankings tank because of that. Very valid point. I think if somebody from Google was watching this hangout, that'd say the same thing. Make sure you don't shoot yourself in the foot. No knee-jerk uh, knee reactions, no panic. Uh, just think carefully, are these links organic? If they are, don't worry about it. Uh, you, you shouldn't be penalized for that. If you know that you specifically created those links, that you paid for them, that you manipulated, that you adjusted the anchor text, that's the kind of stuff that uh, you should worry about. Um, so overall, I think we've got a, um, a fairly solid um, hangout recorded here. Thank you very much, guys. Um, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, we may be running a uh, an ad hoc uh, hangout this uh, weekend with uh, one participant who couldn't join us and is willing to share a lot of information data with us. So um, thanks again, everyone, and uh, hopefully see you next week. Bye bye. Next okay. week. See you.